What's up, Foundation? What's up, YouTube? Man, it's me, your big partner, Cartoon One. I'm back again. I've been gone. Been gone for a minute. I've been in my eight. For y'all who don't know what that means, it don't mean Miami. At least that's not what it means for me. MIA means man, I've been missing in action. I've been missing. I've been gone for about 10 days. But I'm back now. I said the wrong thing, did the wrong thing, uh, showed the wrong thing. When I I posted a video about the fight in Montgomery, Alabama at the at the dock at on the water. And YouTube boo bought me for that. They got me for that. They uh said I did a little bit too much. I went against their guidelines on showing violence. <clears throat> and okay, I probably did. I wasn't YouTube savvy enough to know how to speak on it <clears throat> and just show still pictures of it. Instead, I just put the whole video up and I spoke on it uh, very can uh, uncandidly. You know what I'm saying? I just gave it to you in the wrong how I felt about the whole situation. YouTube didn't like that. But what messed me up is I kept seeing other people put stuff up about it. But the other people that I was seeing were major news sites. And with them being major news sites, I thought it was, uh, they showing it all. I'm thinking it was all right for me to show it all. But it's not. It wasn't. So I put it up. When I tell you I put it up, and I tell you, YouTube snatched it down within 10 minutes. Wham, bam, whoop, flip, flop, flam. <laughs> what? They got down for their grits and gravy on me, y'all. But now, you know, neither here nor there. They did they thug thistle, <clears throat> and they got it. But now, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Live and in color. Man, with no further ado, I'm not even going to hee-haw about it. I'm not. I'm going to pick up right where I left off like ain't nothing never even happened. Um, I'm not sure about the comments, man. For some reason, um, my comments keep getting turned off. I put up a little short, uh, earlier today and the comments keep getting turned off. I don't know because it was a short or what, but now this is going to be a full length video and, um, y'all go, y'all, man, look, y'all comment, hit that like, hit that subscribe, uh, hit the share, hit all that. You know what I'm saying? Cause, um, I'm probably shadow banned and everything else. You know, you do the wrong thing. They going to spank you. So now I don't know I don't know what all type of other little hidden funny bunny uh, restrictions they might have on me behind the scenes that I don't know nothing about. <clears throat> so the only thing I could do is keep on trucking, keep on swinging, and do what I got to do. I just need y'all support. I need I need when y'all see this video, hit that like, man. They can't stop me. As long as y'all hitting them likes and making me relevant, put me in that algorithm. They can't do nothing but respect my get down. You feel what I'm saying? They can't do nothing but respect it. You know what I'm saying? But I got to respect them. Anyway, like I say, with no further ado, man, I'm going to just jump straight into this story. Man, this story takes place in the prison, Donaldson Correctional Facility. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Now, this is the same prison that they've been talking about for the last few days where they uh, on the news They've been showing where the dude got the heat, got the gun, sitting in the prison. Done took the police vest, put it on. They uh, now I'm gonna tell you on the on the thing they blurred the police name out, but I did 23 years straight in Alabama, and the majority of my time was done in that very same prison. I know a lot of people in there still, a lot of people. So you know, and like I say, everybody and their mama got a cell phone in Alabama prison. So you know. Boom, and I and I and I and I and I and I communicate with my people on a regular. So of course, when it was going down, <laughs> you know, I, I was right there like, "What? They could check this out." You feel me? So you know, when they show y'all the picture of the dude with the gun with the police vest on that he took, they blurred the name out. Couldn't blur it out for me. You know what I'm saying? I had it raw and in color. But now let me show you something. I know the police, the same, the very same police, man, that name on that thing. You, if I'm not mistaken, I think he wrote me up for some before, but I know him. I know him very well. And it don't shock me that it was his vest that got took. But anyway, I'm going to speak on it. On to the video, man. This take place, man, in the block, man. Um, One of my little homeboys, one of my little homeboys, man. He was roguish as I don't know. Now, when I say one of my little homeboys, I'm speaking on one of the little crypt members. Anytime I say homeboy, of course, I was the only person there from Fire Trey Avalon. So, but now, 
when I say homeboy, I mean in the extent that they were Crips, you know. I considered all the little Crips my little homeboys or whatever. Unless they were no good, I didn't, you know, want to fool with them. Boom, boom, boom. But when I say my little homeboy, that's what I'm talking about. Now, this one of my little homeboys, man, he was cool. Down the dude, man. I liked him a lot, man. I liked him a lot. Um, he was claiming, he was claiming 5'9 East Coast. That's what he was claiming. Um, I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> but he was claiming 5'9 East Coast. Um, he was roguish, had sticky fingers, didn't want to leave other people's stuff alone. Didn't want to do it. And many times that I would tell him, hey, cuz, check this out, homie. Man, stop stealing. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I had patience with him because I had went through my, my, my I went through my phase. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, tr I'm transparent. I told y'all about it. I went through my phase of uh, putting my hands on other folks' stuff and uh, this, that, and the other. But I know what could come behind it. You feel what I'm saying? And so, lo and behold, as time went on, a situation took place that I figured eventually it was going to take place. He was going to put the gang. Now, when I say the gang, I'm talking about the Crips. He was going to put the gang in a certain position that we probably just didn't want to be in or didn't necessarily have to be in. And what happened was, man, um, one day the police came into the block and uh, they were shaking the dude down. They were, When I say shaking him down, you know, they were searching his cell. They were searching his cell. And um, so they had they had him and his cellie on the tier cuffed up, you know, while they went in there and searched the cell. Now, for whatever reason they were searching their cell for, I don't know. Don't even care. That was, You know, it happens all the time. But anyway, like I say, you know, Alabama prison system is, is a different type animal. Usually, you know, everybody be locked down for something like this or whatever. But no, you had dudes that was, you know, I'm talking about they doing this. While the program is going, you know, day room time, dudes running around, showering, doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? Boom. Told y'all the security, the, the security is protocol is boo-boo <laughs> in the Alabama prison system. But anyway, uh the old school dude that was in the cell, I'm not gonna say his name, I know him very well, know him, know him real well. He was out of Mobile, Alabama. He was an old school killer though. When I tell you he was an old school killer, not to be played with, not to be messed with, period. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Had life it out. He was never, he's never going home again in life. When he leave the prison, it's going to be because he went to the upper room. And he going out feet first. But now, you know, he had, he had, um, he had, he had chopped, diced, sliced, um, pureed a lot of dudes while he was in there. Everybody knew him, cool individual, but everybody, he wasn't nothing to play with. Of course, he got a little older, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, and he made whiskey. He always made, he kept, he was known for the whiskey. He was one of the main whiskey men that was in, you know, that was in the block. Everybody would come to him, you know what I'm saying? Boom. And, um, you know, he was cool dude. If, if you got his whiskey, he expect for you to pay him. If you couldn't pay him right then and there, sometimes he would, you know, let you get it on consignment or whatever. He'd be like, well, I'll give it to you today. You know, just catch me in the store run. And, you know, it was cool like that. Wasn't nobody going to really try to beat him out of nothing because they they know you you playing death games with him. That's, that's exactly what you're playing with him. Anyway, while, the po while they was on the tier, the police in the cell, uh, tearing the cell up. Now, old school would have some whiskey that was made, but it was in a different type of little jug. And the police, they looking for them chemical jugs, them gallon jugs that the uh, the bleach come in or the um you know, the, the, the disinfectant or the, the window cleaners, all that stuff. You know, y'all know them big old white, you know, them big old clear, clear jugs. Anyway, that's what most people made it in at that time. He had made it in a different type jug. But make a long story short, the police, he had two gallons of it. Um, the police had set had set a lot of stuff out on the tier. And so anyway, he, you know, he was the only matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, he was he was was he in a cell by himself at the time? I know he had a celly, but I think he might have been in a cell by himself. But anyway, while the police was in there messing with stuff, he had walked back up on the cell door, you know, with his hand cuffed behind him. <clears throat> and he talked, hey man, y'all knew, you know, woo-woo, trying to throw the police off. You know, he probably had his knife in his cell. 
and he didn't want the police to find it because now if you got life without parole and you get caught with a heat, that's an automatic year in jail. Now, when I say jail in Alabama, that means lockup. So that's an automatic, that's an automatic year in jail. If you get caught with that heat, no if, ands, or buts. Now, if you just a, a, a regular lifer or dudes with some regular numbers, you get caught with a knife, man. You you might go to jail and do uh, uh, two months, three months, four months, six months, you know, something like that. You know, nor, four months and you back out, you know? So if that. <clears throat> but anyway, while he was doing that, man, the little homie done creeped up on the tier. Bang, bang. And grabbed both gallons and got ghosts. Yeah. Now all this was going on unbeknownst to me. I, I I don't know nothing about him getting this whiskey. But now you know, of course, people in the day room done seen it. You know, you know, do somebody somebody gonna say something about something? Okay, so now the police end up leaving. The little homie is across the hallway. He didn't he didn't he didn't shot across the hallway. He on the other side of the block. So um. Old school, when he putting his stuff up, you know, boom, he rec he realized his stuff is gone. He's not the type, like, I'm, you know, he's not the type to like who did, who got, whoop, wop, wop, and, you know, make a, a overtly open broadcast over the whole, you know, day room. He don't do that. No, he cut he from, he from, cut from a different cloth. You know, he ain't, he ain't that type. A lot of times dudes doing that ain't going to throw rice at a wedding. You know, like they tell you, an uh, empty cart make a lot of noise. He know his stuff gone. He know somebody that got it. He didn't say nothing. He eased around to certain different people and he asked them, hey, look, you was you was out your cell while the police was shaking me down. He like, man, who came got them jugs? Who came got this and that? You know, whatever. Who came got it? <clears throat> Eventually he found out who had it. Eventually he found out who had it. Now, he knew the dude who had it was a crib. Now, of course, he could have bypassed all protocol and just went and slaughtered the, slaughtered the little youngster or tried to slaughter him. You know what I'm saying? I will never take none from another man, you know, and say what, 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 what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it was, it was going to be some bloodshed. What he did, I commend him on. He knew I was in the block and he knew since the dude was a crip, bring it to me. So, you know, a knock at my door came. Boom, 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 boom. So when the knock at the door came, I, um, I, you know, come on. So old school came on in. You know, like I said, I know him. You know, we'd be at the poker game together sometime. And he like, Toon, what's up, man? I say, okay, what's going on, my brother? He say, listen, I need to talk to you, man, about one of yours. I'm like, what happened? What's up? So he mentioned the youngster's name. He said, you know, I was like, yeah, that's the little homie. Why? Right, what's up, homie? He say, listen, man, the one time was just shaking me down. He didn't say one time. He said the police. He said, man, the police were just shaking me down, doing this and that. And um, I had two gallons of whiskey, and um, your people got it, man. I'm like, you sure? He like, yeah, you know, I, I did my homework. You know what I'm saying? I made sure, I was sure about what I was saying before I even came to your cell. I'm like, okay. He say, listen, I don't know if they done drunk it up. I don't know what they've done. For, um, I said, well, where is he at right now? He said, he, he across the hallway, man. He on two sides. I said, okay. He said, listen to him. I need my stuff back, man. You, 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 you know as well as I do that I'm not finna go for this. He said, the fact that he did this, I'm willing to overlook it if I get my stuff back. If not the stuff, I get my money back. I said, okay. I said, let me handle it, homie. I said, thank you for coming to me. Let me handle it. Let me, uh, let me take care of this. Let me, let me do this for you. I'm, 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 I'm gonna get you straight, homie. He like, I, I figured that tune. He say, man, good looking out, man. He jumped up, you know, bang, he gave me some dap. He left. Now, of course, at this time, now, now <clears throat> I'm in a position where I'm obligated to make sure that this turned out right because I told him that I was going to take care of it. You know what I'm saying? Man of his word, man of my word. Okay. First chance I got to shoot across the hallway, I shot across the hallway and I went and found him. I'm like, cuz, man, come here, come here, come here, come here. So he's like, man, what's up, Big Low? What's up, homie? I said, come on, let's go to the cell. Let's talk. So we go to the cell. We get to the cell, and uh, I say, listen, man, you you stole uh you stole old school whiskey, man. He like, man, come to him. I said, hold up. I say, this me. 
I say, now, you know, for me to come way over here and say this to you, I must already know to get out. I must already know the demo that took place. So don't start all that hee hee haw haw and wah 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 with me, homie. Don't do that, cuz. I say shoot straight with me, homie, because I'm finna shoot straight with you. Because you have put yourself in a situation that could not turn out nice for you. Any way it goes, it's not gonna turn out good. I say, now did you get the whiskey? He like, yeah, cuz I got it. I say, where is that? He like, homie, man, I drunk it. What? Cuz, you drunk all that by yourself? Why you ain't drunk? He like, nah, man, I passed it out with the locs, man, and, you know, a couple of other people, man. I sold a, I sold a couple of cups and wop, wop this and wop, wop that. Now, the average now the average gallon of whiskey go for, like, eight packs of, uh, eight bags of coffee, or, you know what I'm saying, eight packs of tops, something like that, cigarettes. <clears throat> a lot of time they want the coffee because you're going to get probably one more item out the coffee than you would if you was dealing with the cigarettes. I say, cuz, look, why you do that? Man, I, I said, cuz, man, you know this fool. Don't you know that that man is not going to go for this, homie? You know he not going to go for this. You know that fool ain't somebody that you just pull a stunt on like this. I say, now, now I'm, not, I'm not taking nothing from your heart. I say, cuz, if you if you willing to pick that knife up and go, and, and go to war about two gallons of whiskey, I say it's on you, homie. I say, cuz you had you, you know, get out for your grits and gravy. Handle your crown. But you know he coming. And you know he ain't coming to scratch you. You know he ain't coming to just nip you. You know this man is coming to see what your insides look like. Straight up. You know he a killer, man. He ain't never going home again. In life. You know what's up with him. Now, homie, I'm not saying you not no killer. But in the back of my mind, I knew he wasn't no killer. Not like that. Not like that. We were going to have to come to his aid. We were going to have, we was going to have to lose a few homies to jail behind helping the little homie because he pulled a pookie because he did some real super stupid dumb stuff because we weren't finna let old school kill him. No, we weren't finna let that happen. But I'm, I, I, I want the situation to go away. I say, cuz go get me the money you got left. He had, he had, he had, um, oh, my bad, y'all. I froze up. I, my motion sensor on my cameras, it came on and it showed me what was in my front yard. I had to look and see what that was. But anyway, he had a uh, six, he had six bags of coffee. So that means he was, uh, eight, nine, 10. He was 10 bags short. So he was like, well, Toon, cuz, what you, you know, what you, I say, man, look, man, I said, we're going to have to come together on this one, cuz, I, I, I said, you know what I'm saying? I said, look, uh, we're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. I said, just let me work with it. Let me work with it. He like, all right. So now I took, I took, I took the, I took the six that he had and I took him back over there. So I went to old school cell. I'm like, look, let me holler at you. I gave him the six. I say, uh, I say, do me a favor, man, from me to you. I say, give me about four days and we're going to make sure you get the other 10. Is that cool? Can, can, can we live with that one? So now, of course, with him being a very smart man, he know that what he know, he know what he would do, but he also knew what we wasn't just going to stand around and let him do. You feel what I'm saying? It's a catch-22. You danged if you do, you danged if you don't. And that's on both parties. If you try to hurt the little homie, we don't have no choice but to come to his aid and assist. Now, you're going to hurt some folks, but it's going to be so many of us on your head that we going to slaughter you. Why have to why have to lose homies to lock up, catching time and all that for what this pookie done pulled? And he so you know he took the discretion as the better part of valor. He know okay, it happened. I got me six right here. Give big tune the days he was at, and I'm knowing tune gonna make it right, and I was gonna make it right. He say tune, look from me to you, I got it, homie. You know I'm gonna wait. You got me. I said I got you. He like all right, bet it up. I said, okay. 
I went back over there. I tell the little homie, I'm like, cuz, look, check this out, man. You got to get them teeing up. However you go, I got, I said, homie's going to help you. We're going to do this and do that and do this and do that. You got four days. I said, cuz, get that up, homie, or it's going gonna, it's gonna to be ugly. He like, homie, okay. So now, of course, you know, he 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 went to scrambling. He went into overdrive. Now, it, it wasn't, wasn't no thing. I, myself, personally, uh, took, I gave him three bags. I said, cuz, look, I'm going to give you three bags of my coffee that I can spare. I said, cuz, you just get them back to me whenever you can. Now, I was known to do this a lot of times. I done saved plenty, homies, during the times that I had a lot of money running store and stuff. I'd give it to them and they, you know, get it back to me. So they could go ahead and get get their tail out of a crack with somebody who don't care for them the way I care for them because we Crips. So anyway, I gave him three of mine, and within within three days, it didn't take four. Within three days, he had ball, did this and this and did this and that. But he come up with it. I say, cool. I say, look, man, uh, come on with me. He said, what's up? I say, cuz, look, this is what we gonna do. I say, I can easily take him back over there and give them to him. I said, but now. You going with me, homie. You going to give them to him. I say, cuz, when you give them to him, let him know, hey, look, man, my bad for even pulling a stunt like that, homie. Look, here go your money. Um, Let's let bygones be bygones, and I promise you, I ain't going to never fool with your stuff no more, homes. You know, get an understanding with him. So he was like, you right, big tune. Come on. So we shot back across the hallway. He had the bag with the money in it. Boom. So I knock at the door. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm like, cuz, you wait out here. So he like, come on in. So I went on in. I, 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 you know, I'm hollering at old school. I tell him, I say, look, man, we got your money. I'm, I say, but now look, my little homeboy. I say, look, he finna bring it in, and he got, some, you know, he got some something you want to say to you. Is everything cool? He like, too, man. If I get my money, man, I'm through with it, man. I said, bet. So I'm like, boom. I push it up like, cuz, come on in. So the homie come in. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, boom. He, you know, he hand him the bag. Old boy counted it. It was cool. And but now, you know, the homie was, you know, respect. He say, look, man, uh, I tripped out. I should have never pulled that stunt. I should have never boom, boom, boom. He say, man, look, there go the money. He say, man, if, if, if we can go ahead and let bygones be bygones, he kind of giving it to him word for word verbatim how I gave it to him. So we let him know, man, if we can let bygones be bygones, I promise you, man, that ain't going to never happen no more from me. And uh, let's just be cool if we can. So old school was cool, but you know, because old school, man, you know, he didn't want to, you know, he know anything he got into, he was going to be in lockup for at least a whole year. While a homie might go back there and do two, three months, and he out. So, of course, this was the, you know, the, the, the more sensible way out. I say, yeah, let's, you know, that's cool. So old school was like, okay, cool, homie, you know, no problem. And they shook hands. Boom. No fuss, no muss. The homie went his way. When he left out the cell, I, you know, I, I spoke to old school a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? We got a better understanding. And I told him, I say, look, you ain't got to worry about, I, I, no, I told him, I say, look, I can't say nothing about nobody else ever trying you or, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. I say, but now what I can let you know is won't no Crips never try to steal nothing from you. Is that cool? He like, man, Tune, I, I, you, I take you for your word, homie. You know what I'm saying? You always been straight up with me. I know how you run your program around here with your people. It's cool. I'm like, well, bet, homie, you know. I ended up leaving out the cell. Never had a, never, 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 never had a, while I was, long as I was there, never had another incident, never got into it, uh, you know, nothing else with him. And it was, you know, one of them things, you know, you run across them type problems in prison, they gonna happen. But that's, when you got a good leader, when you have a good leader, things tend to run a little bit better than what they do when you got a dummy that that's that's on, at the helm of the ship. If you got a dummy being the captain of the ship, that's when you hear you run into them situations where they gonna say, "Man, listen, you gonna go off the edge of the cliff, and you gonna take everybody else off the edge of the cliff with you." I ain't never been one of them. I've always been a good mediator. I've always been one that can try to get the, the situation squashed before it turns into something else. And that's what I did. That's what I did. Y'all see Mr. Wiggles. He's back too. So it's me, man, your big partner, Cartoon One. Man, I'm back, homie. Man, y'all please hit that like button, man. Hit that like, hit that share, hit all that. I need to get back up in that algorithm, y'all. And I represent the gangsters. Peace. I'm out.